Hello students and welcome to our next lecture of uh, PATH 354 that is diseases of GAVA. We are starting with our first disease of the GAVA that is WILD. So the WILD disease is caused by Fusarium oxysporum family species CD. Basically as we have seen in the earlier diseases that Fusarium basically origins from the soil. Heavy moist soil, ill drained soils responsible for the infection through the roots and multiplies in the vascular tissue to cause the systemic infection. So the same way in case of the fusarium here in the GAVA where maybe some kind of stagnation of water, heavy moisture responsible for this kind of infection. So you can see here in the uh, lower image. So the destruction of the roots you can see in uh, if you see the lower root parts by uh, removing the soil at the basal portion of the stem. So the certain kind of rotting or decomposing of the roots has been started. Externally only you can see drying of the leaves, shedding of the leaves, sickness to the plants, underdevelopment of the plant. So that might be a physiological stress in the form of physiological stress to the plant. And if you see on the stem, you can find a certain kind of layer lesions develops on a certain particular stem part along with the layer is uh, uh, removing from that particular stem. So these all kind of symptoms to be arises or occurs on a uh, wilt uh, infected plant. So these kind of similar pattern may be seen in case of uh, drought conditions. So unless and until you uproot or you break some kind of roots from the lower portion and if, if you make a two halves by any knife so you can see a brownish discoloration of vascular tissue and that is the main identifying character of the fusarium that in pathological uh, scientific way we can say as a brownish discoloration of the vascular tissue that is the most identifying character of the fusarium so these are some of the symptoms which is related with the wilt of the gawa so primary source of infection occurs by the dormant mycelium from the soil and secondary source of infection by conidia in the form of macroconidia and microconidia uh, by irrigation water. So this is the symptoms and the primary and secondary source of diseases of uh, particularly the wilt. Now second disease of GAVA is anthracnose which is caused by colitotricum gliosporioids as you have seen so many anthracnose diseases in this syllabus. So the same kind of symptoms occurs on the external surface of the fruit. Basically, we have seen so many uh, lesions which is developed on the leaf first of all. But here in case of anthracnose of GAVA, you can see here this polytoticum targets the fruits basically as compared to the fruits, uh, as compared to sorry, as compared to the leaves. So main factor or main uh, targeting point is the fruits when the fruits are at the maturity level at you can see here at this image when the fruit is mature uh, condition so circular brown spots arises on the external surface of the fruit I think you have seen so many such kind of lesions or spots on the fruit so many times when you are going to eat that particular cow uh, fruit or you are seen in the market or maybe in the transport, just such kind of spots may be arises. When this fruit uh, may be sugar percentage increases due to its maturity, when it becomes mature or ripen, ripening stage started, so the stages of the anthracnose, as the many fungus requires the sugar substances from the fruits for its multiplication. So you can see here, the small lesions increases to form a big patch here in the next picture. So it becomes a big lesions, not we can't call it as a spot, but it's mixed into the lesions and a small fungal growth can be seen on the external surface of the fruit. And here also at the crown region, the lower portion of the fruit, it is known as a crown region. So near to the crown region, <coughs> Sorry, sometimes the fungus enters inside the fruit from this crown region. So the crown region also infected to form a rotted symptoms or a blackening 
symptoms or a black and blackish lesion around the ground region so it causes the heavy rotting and dropping of the fruit so this is about the anthracnose of the gava primary source of infection of this anthracnose disease of gava is by plant debris means dormant mycelium from the plant debris and the secondary infection by conidia by air and the rain splash whatever the conidia develops on the external surface of the food that can be swim by air current or also by the rain splash so this is about the disease of the gava wilt and anthracnose the both the diseases are important for your examination next uh, crop is banana so we, we are going to start with the important disease of the banana that is panama wilt causal organism is fusarium oxysporum family species cubens so same type of wilting conditions are there as compared to the other fusarium wilts now why it is called as panama wilt as just before in the british era means in 90s the the rhizomes and the suckers are to be imported from panama ireland near to the north america in between the south and north america so that there is a panama ireland near costa rica so these suckers that is planting material imported from that panama ireland to india and that's why that the origin of the wilting uh, started means this wilt disease started due to that suckers which is to be imported in india that's why it is known as panama wilt due to the name of the ireland that is panama ireland so and from this uh, near about uh, 150 years it is settled now in our soil so same condition the fusarium as you know uh, the resting spores are chlamydospores which are to be known to be resting for near about 5 to 7 years if the multiple heavy irrigated soils is there heavy moist soil is there water stagnation condition ill drain uh, conditions are there for the soil so this kind of uh, condition or the structure of the soil is responsible for the perpetuation of the chlamydospores for uh, so many years in the soil so the chlamydospores then germinate to form the systemic infection through through the roots and multiplies in the vascular tissue so if you see that uh, we know that the physiology of the banana plant that's heavy moist stem if you cut the stem you can see heavy moisture inside so you can see here the systemic infection occurs externally if you see in this upper image so externally you can see only the chlorosis of the leaves drying of the leaves then total collapsing of the plant you can see here the this plant lie down on the soil surface this plant is also you can see here that the wilting means death of the plant but the exact symptom if you want to see so you have to cut the the particular stem into two halves you can see here the complete girth of the stem cut down in the b image so you can see the brownish discoloration of the vascular tissues here also in the c image so brownish discoloration of the vascular tissue and also here so this heavy moisture conditions are responsible for the multiplication of the fusarium heavily inside the stem and the vascular tissues to cause the rottening process fastly to leads to the development of the chlorosis of the leaves externally then uh, drying of the leaves then wilting of the plant and death of the plant to cause the collapsing on the soil surface so complete death of the plant may be occurs to causes the heavy losses in heavy moist soils so this is about the panama wilt uh, of banana causal organism means primary source of infection sorry primary source of infection occurs by infected planting material and by the soil through chlamydospores and secondary source of infection by irrigation water by the conidia so this is about the panama wilt now second is bacterial wilt so causal organism is xanthomonas campestris pathovers musa serum so there is a, another organism which is responsible for the wilt because we have seen the panama wilt that is the fungal wilt fusarium oxysporum and here that we have seen we are seeing about the bacterial wilt that is caused by xanthomonas campestris xanthom xanthomonas bacteria is also origins from the soil to cause the systemic infection to the plant so you can see here in the upper image so uh, externally the same uh, symptoms can be seen in case of the panama wilt as well as the bacterial wilt so the chlorosis of the leaves the, the drying of the leaves 
certainly within a certain uh, uh, short duration the plant undergoes the heavy wilting and death condition can be seen externally unless and until if you cut the stem you can't see the any particular symptom related with the bacterial infection so you have to cut the stem into two parts by any knife and you can see the back, uh, brownish discoloration of vascular tissue and along with that you can see here here at the upper image the ooze taste oozing means some of the sticky or rotted gummy part comes out from the infected stem so this is the difference between fungal wilt and the bacterial wilt in case of fungal wilt you can't see the any ooze means a bacterial ooze it is known as a bacterial ooze in our pathological language so basically this xanthomonas bacteria when causes the toxic effect on the cells or the vascular tissue to form this kind of rotted material when you cut the infected stem it will carries out throw out this particular rotted part in the which is to be uh, toxic material uh, infected with the tissue so this is the difference between the fungal wilt and the bacterial wilt which is caused by the xanthomonas in case of the fruiting stage when the bacterial wilt occurs at the fruiting stage so such kind of premature ripening of the banana fruit can be seen so you can see here this is a premature stage and the blackish appearance on the banana fruit or the yellowish that is chlorosis occurs and if you cut the banana fruit uh, so you can see here the yellowish development inside the fruit pith region so these are about the some of the symptoms related with the bacterial wilt that is caused by the xanthomonas campestris so primary source of infection is from soil which is the bacterium origin from the soil and the secondary source of infection of the bacterium by irrigation water insects tools and implements so particularly in case of xanthomonas when the bacteria may be swim by the irrigation water also but the insects when comes in contact with these infected fruits so the insects also ca carries the xanthomonas from one healthy plants or sorry infected plants to healthy plants and also by the way of tools and implements if you are using any pruning knife cutting knife on the infected plant and then to the healthy plant so it may be carries by the these kind of tools and implements from health infected to healthy plant so this is about the secondary source of infection of the bacterial wilt now third disease of the banana that is a common and very important disease in our area that is cigatoka causal organism is mycosporella musicola this is a fungal organism basically origins from the plant debris and heavily infecting uh, the uh, banana leaves you can see this this is at any banana plot now your days in the month of june july august september because this mycosporella that particularly uh, develops at the time of heavy humidity that's rainfall days cloudy weather so this this uh, particular months are very responsible means uh, favorable conditions are responsible for the development of this cigatoka and so you can find anywhere this disease on the banana leaves so what are the symptoms you can see here at the upper image the yellow lines particularly first of all you can see here here on the lower image also and the upper image the yellow lines run opposite to the midrib this is the midrib you can see the midrib of the leaf and then at the opposite side you can see here the yellow lines yellow sticks are run parallel just opposite to the midrib first of all and then the same as the infection progresses by the support of the heavy humidity average temperature and some kind of uh, uh, rainy days or cloudy weather so such kind of lesions dried patches or the lesions developed on the leaves and then multiplication to be carried out by the heavy humidity may be continuously 80% and more up till uh, more than 7 to 15 days so it may be having heavy destructive losses to the leaves you can see here heavy blightness started from the margin towards inwards toward the midrib so at the bottom image you can see here as well as here so this kind of blightness started from the margin of the leaf towards the inward and it's extend towards the midrib to cause heavy losses to the leaves first of all means which uh, causes the heavy blightness uh, to the leaves so it resembles as a cigatoka of the leaves 
this leaves undergoes heavy blightness to cause the drying of the leaves then adversely effect on the development of the plants means first of all infected with the lower leaves if you observe if you visit any plot so you can observe the lower leaves mostly infected and then it started with the lower to the upper part of the plant and totally destruction of the leaves to cause the physiological stress to the plant adversely effect on the development of the plant flowering of the plant and the fruiting of the plant so this is about the cigatuca disease of the banana primary source of infection of uh, this cigatuca is by ascospores from infected leaves that is from the infected plant debris and secondary source of infection by conidia by wind and irrigation water so this is about the cigatuca of banana now the last disease of the banana that is bunchy top disease so this is a viral disease known as bunchy top uh, banana bunchy top virus causal organism is the banana bunchy top virus this is a planting material oriented uh, viral disease if you are, you have selected any certain kind of suckers which is originally infected by the virus so such kind of symptoms can be seen in in that particular plant so bunchy top if you see here at the first image so the infected planting material grows in a uh, in a certain way in a uh, well manner first of all in the first 7 days or 15 days or one month and then certainly it stunted the growth of the plant and then all the leaves are accumulated at the top you can see here at the, this image all the leaves accumulated at the top and they are pointed toward the sky in the form of bunch of the leaves at the top of the plant so that's why this disease known as bunchy top you can see here in this image this uh, effect just looks like a broom when you are using the broom this is the lower portion of the broom and this is might be uh, assume as a, the upper part of the broom so this all leaves accumulated at the top they, they are pointing toward the sky because if you see the basic physiology of, of the plant the normal physiology of the healthy plant so the the certain kind of healthy leaves doesn't uh, looks like a pointing toward the sky they are just, just uh, lying down so one by one opening from the pseudo stem to form the opening and lying down toward the soil surface but it it resembles opposite to this infected uh, in this infected plant so they are pointing pointing toward the sky <coughs> and they are shortened they are very small size leaves and they are in, accumulated in the form of the bunch at the top so that's why it is known as bunchy top disease so this plant remains stunted there is no any further development of the plant or grow any growth of the plant and sometimes maybe causes the death of the plants so when uh, this certain kind of uh, virus uh, transmitted by the vector vector is aphid that is pentalonia nigro nervosa a certain kind of aphid carries the virus from one uh, plant to infected plant to the healthy plant so if it is carries from this plant to the fully grown plant so you can see here in the next image so this leaves also causes the infection to form uh, these are fully grown plants so these also having the same infection here they are pointing toward the sky accumulation at the top so that certain kind of infection can be seen on the secondarily infected or transmitted plants also so this kind of infection on the initially the planting when done after 15 days or 20 days maybe in the small plants and also the higher plants fully grown plants can be seen in case of the bunchy top so this is about the symptoms very important disease in the banana that is bunchy top disease caused by banana bunchy top virus and transmission is important here transmission carries by the vector that is pentalonia nigro nervosa so this is about the diseases of guava and diseases of banana in the next lecture we will see about the diseases of papaya and diseases of pomegranate in the next lecture okay uh, for then uh, see you in the next lecture good day